so in the previous sessions uh, we discussed about uh, the wildcards and uh, a few other uh, basic queries uh, right from select select distinct aliases between in and null values update delete and like like operator and uh, select top minimum maximum count average and some or some of these aggregate functions so and uh, we discussed about wildcards wild cards as well so today we'll be continuing with constraints constraints so constraints and uh, we did not discuss about uh, ddl like in the previous session which is data definition language uh, which is completely occupied about like alter insert update commands DDLR of create and alter and drop. So these things we'll be discussing today. Uh, am I audible loud and clear? Yep. Thanks, Navin Anil. Okay, uh, let's go with DDLs first, then uh, we can go for uh, the constraints. Constraints, we have several of them. Uh, I'll give you the index. Not null being the first constraint and unique and as well as primary key, foreign key. And what else do we have? Check and default. So these are the constraints that we will be discussing today in our sessions and uh, these three commands that we will be discussing about DDL. You already know about create, uh, how to create table or how to create database and how to make use of it. So, uh, Let's move past to create and uh, we'll discuss about alter today. So I'm using the same database as, same database as Pratt session as I'm uh, as I was using uh, like in the previous sessions as well. So we have some one table called uh, employee. So this is what our table is. And we have like several uh, data freeze or like data rows in it. So I've sent one uh, link to download SSMS yesterday. Uh, how many of you already downloaded the SSMS? Okay, I'll... Jai Kishore and Chunath also downloaded. And who else? Uh, Navin, you said uh, you had uh, one problem during installation. Uh, is it done now? Okay, I'll take that as a confirmation. Okay, give me a message uh, after this call, Naveen. What is the error message that you were getting? Okay, we are good to go, I guess. 
and guys don't uh, write on uh, my screen okay i think we are good to go so this is the table that we had created yesterday with uh, with basic some of the commands and uh, the, all of the things that we did yesterday so let's try uh, altering this table so what if um, i had created my uh, city column with uh, i guess 100 uh, characteristics so i don't uh, now i want my city uh extended to be like uh till 150 characters for that uh, i don't have like i need to change the structure of the table so for that we we will be using alter command so alter is the one that we use to alter the table alter the table structure Am I clear till now? So, alter employee. So let's continue. So we have alter command to alter our employee table. And if you want to alter this particular city column, we use uh, alter again uh, to make it like uh, to modify it. Column and the column name is city. We make it to 150 and we should mention the data type unknown object type employee why is it just because i did not mention this particular keyword table alter table so we have plenty of objects available in the uh, plenty of types of objects available in the uh, sql server so we need to specify which type of that particular object is so let's try this got successful so now i can able to enter all the 150 150 characters into it so let me check if i have that see this city got 150 now so this is how we alter the tables. And what if I want I want to add the any of the columns? See, let's have uh, what do what do we have? Department DOB. And let's have a domain field, domain column to uh, capture the domain details of the employee. For that, we don't have domain in this particular employee table, and we should be adding it now. So that's also the use case of alter. The table employee add column. Add column and the column name. What is it? Domain. Which is of type. Where care again, it's of 100. It says we have a error in this. 
that is because we we should not be using this particular thing it commands complete text successfully and uh, we should be having this particular uh, field column called domain in the table employee let's see if we have that okay we have this domain column already available so this is about alter we can change the data type or data length or add the columns or remove the columns let's add like uh, one more dummy column to showcase uh, how to remove the column Let's call it domain dummy. It is also of uh, Envircare 200. So I executed this. So I should be having domain dummy also now. See, I have the domain dummy column in here. If I want to delete this domain dummy, and again, we should go to the same command, alter table, employee, And any cases like what is the command that we are going to use to delete? Drop. Drop domain dummy. Let's select this and click on the execute. It says Domain dummy is not a constraint. And let's add column. This domain dummy is not a constraint. That's a, it's a particular column that we uh, are trying to delete it. So that's where we create, I mean, we mentioned that it's a column with a column keyword. Let's execute this. So it comments complete successfully. And uh, let's check the data on the table. I uh, will get to know the structure of it. Here we go. Domain dummy is no more available. So this is how the alter command actually works. To alter the command, to alter the column or, uh, or the like the data type or the names, whatever it is. And we have drop also. This is about alter and what else do we have today create is done alter is done let's go for drop drop is all about like uh, we have multiple objects let's say uh, i have employee object which is of type table and let's say i have another uh, table also called uh, emp1 uh let's say i have maintained this emp1 as a temporary table and i i i long i no longer need this so for this i'm just gonna uh, mention like uh, drop table and table name what it does it actually clears off all the table information and table dependencies from our database let's create for uh, the me sake and let's drop it let's uh, create emp1 table with the uh, id of int and uh, name of uh, worker of 10 it's 100 and then let's execute this it says emp1 is created let's check if it is created or not Let's start from MP1. See, it's created now. To, in order to delete this or to remove this particular EMP, EMP1, what we'll be doing? This is the command that should be doing it. So let's execute this. I've executed the drop table, table name command. So it says command completed successfully. And then I'll execute the select stuff from EMP1 to see the table data or the object exist or not. 
it says invalid object name emp1 that is because we dropped from here am i clear now till now thank you so this is about drop and we have like uh, several commands to uh, not the commands we have several applications for drop we'll be discussing in detail about them in discussions about the constraints so we have completed the details and we have one more thing called uh, truncate in the ddl commands itself this particular truncate what it actually does is it deletes all the data from the table so to showcase that i'm gonna show you and let's create another table called emp2 and let's copy all the data from emp employee table Select star into EMP2. Okay, this is not going to work. This is uh, select into is the command uh, where we create a uh, tables uh, from the existing tables so let's say i have uh, um, like employee table select uh, star emp2 from employee so this is how we view uh, like we create uh, tables or anything uh, you know like replications see it says five rows affected and let's check if we have it select star from two okay we have all the data which is available in the employee table so this select into is one of the commands uh to create or like uh what we say to create another table with an existing structure with an existing data so this is about select star into uh, this is also a very important one and now let's go with our truncate truncate what it actually does it deletes all the data and it's uh relations. so truncate table name EMP2. Okay. It's completed successfully, and let's see if we have it. This is how the truncate works. Uh, one moment, guys. Are we guys clear uh, clear till truncate? Hello. Yeah, I'll take it as yes. And let's move to. Uh, guys, are you? Please keep yourself muted unless uh, if there is any doubt or any question to be asked. So this is about the DDLs. We are now completed the DDL commands. 
and what else do we have to discuss today so these are the constraints that we should be discussing today jay kishore yes truncate is used to remove all the data from the table say one dot yes uh, select into that statement i have one second you can tell me uh, you want me to repeat, repeat, yeah. repeat the selecting to yeah yeah select store okay no problem okay so yeah uh, this is the uh, command and uh, this is the syntax that we use to copy or uh, to create a replica of an existing table so this is the existing table we usually do select star from employee that uh, it actually gives to uh, this console or like uh, this output window the output window will be the like uh, output point for our uh, query and what i'm doing is i'm just selecting into this particular table in the two so if i execute that, this, uh, yep the miss that uh, from existing table uh, existing table from employee table it will copy all the data and structure from the yes. base from emb2 not the structure but the data okay only data it will copy yes okay okay thank you see after execution it says already employee 2 is available so it is with to uh, create a new table with the data of an existing table so if i go and like uh, press on again for uh, employee 3 just does all the way same so let's start from employee 3 again this is our, this is the data of employee 3 table and uh, let's now move to constraints so what is actually a constraint constraint is a kind of like a rule uh, that to be imposed on the table so this is the basic uh, like definition you can say of the constraint let's go into a new work pad what else do we have here constraints all of these things we will be discussing today so first first constraint not null so uh, we have a particular table called employee uh, which allows null values let me show you this is one table that has that can allow like uh, null in all the columns irrespective of uh, its column name or its uh, data type it can now uh, it can allow into all the columns so this is where the picture comes in like uh, if i don't want uh, this date of birth column to be null or this date of birth to be mandatorily filled what i'll be doing that time so uh, for that i should be uh, imposing one rule or a set of rules on a particular column whenever the insertion is happening that that particular rule will be checked at first then only it will be like inserting into a table if the conditions are passed if the condition is not passed it's gen is just going to reject the insertion operation so let's say i'm going to create one dummy table uh let's create table tab dummy i'll name it tab dummy this is a dummy table to show how we add the constraints uh, at the time of creation of the table so uh, constraints can actually can be added at the time of creation of the table and as well as at the time of altering the table so these are the two times of of a, like two instances of an object that where we can add the we can, where we can add the constraints 
one is at the creation time and another one is the alteration time alteration time is that alter uh, command that we used like just before a few minutes um i'll show you uh, like creation time adding adding constraints at the creation time so let's say table dummy it obviously has id as one column and it is data type is integer and i want to make it as not null so i just mention not null in here and name as a variable of some 20 just a dummy table let's not let's not waste uh, objects memory let's execute this it says commands completed successfully but all the like all the output of this is like just same as a normal creation of the table uh, when we select the data from it to check whether the object is exist or not let's see Yes, please keep yourself mute Thank you. Uh, I see HP and Dell today uh, as a new as I know who are there. You know, just drop me a message with your names, please. It helps me track. So uh, yeah, let's select this values. So we have created ID and the name columns with uh, within the dummy table. Uh, it just says as like uh, same as things. Anil Kumar. Okay. And let's try to insert into dummy table. Insert into tab dummy. I'll use let's say one comma some name e1 it obviously gets inserted into this table that is because we have specified id with some value let's try inserting in the other way without specifying the id so let's define the columns as well Let's say name we have that we are trying to insert table dummy with, uh, into the column name. We are inserting the A1, not the A1. Let's say A2. Uh, to show the values of A uh, tab dummy, I'm just going to execute this. Say we have one and A, and I'm trying to insert A2 without any ID. Let's try this. What it says cannot insert the value null into id column table practice session dot debo dot tape dummy column does not allow nulls this is how it actually uh, stops us from like uh, inserting the invalid data or like uh, not inserting from the mandatory data so this is about the not null so to summarize this not null not null is the keyword that we use to impose a mandatory uh, data insertion, mandatory value insertion into the table columns. So this is about not null. This is at the time of creation. So when we created the database table, that time we added ID uh, with not null constraint. Uh, with the creation time only, we can add in one more way. Let's say uh, this is the uh, table that we created. Let's say dam tab dummy one. Uh, I'm gonna show it like another way of uh, inserting the value, uh, like inserting the or mentioning the constraint.
so how we do that so there are like uh, sometimes we might need a name for a constraint to go uh, like which is uh, imposing on uh, uh, the columns of a table so that's how it gets added uh, i'm going to show in the like uh, uh, next couple of uh, with the next couple of what it called constraints uh, this is how the creation time uh, not null constraint can be added what if if we already have the table but we did not mention any uh, like uh, non null constraint uh, into that particular uh, uh, table columns so that's where our previous example comes into picture so let's start from employee let's see so this table does not have any of the constraints let's add the constraints and like uh, let's try altering the table and add the constraints for that we just use alter command alter table employee and modify the column which is like uh, emp id and we should add are you guys listening be responsive guys this is not a school or i'm not a teacher let's execute this incorrect syntax modified so what went wrong here can there can anyone like what went wrong here modify and any other suggestions what went wrong except jay kishore everyone is like uh, well let's try with your uh, suggestion jay kishore which is again wrong And any other suggestions, guys? And please just show the table. Let's see. Yep, this is the one.
Yeah, thanks. That is the best one. Well, that didn't work out. Any other suggestions, Jay Krishna? Sorry, Jay Kishore. You can unmute and speak up for yourself. No issues in that. Sorry? No, sir. No ideas. Okay, no problem. Hello. Yep. Okay. It says UK employees dependent on the column EMP ID. Auto problem failed because of the objects access in this column. So on minute. Yep. Uh, alter table employee column alter i don't think this is gonna work because the column keyboard itself uh, in front of the thing that is okay uh, this is the proper command that can be executed like uh, whenever the it is not there. Uh, this is the proper one. Thanks to Manjunath. And we have unique column. Uh, what is this unique case? Uh, we discussed about uh, not null constraint. Not null is the one uh where the uh, value should be there uh, one or the other something is something uh, the value should be there at least and uh, the unique is the one uh, which like uh, which imposes the rule saying uh, the values inside the particular column that we define the unique constraint on should be different with uh, um any of the other values in the columns. So it just says that it should be like uh, different from others. No multiple values are allowed. Multiple in the sense like uh, no, no same value allowed multiple times in the particular column. So this says about the unique. So how we have the unique uh, constraint. So it just same as the previous one. If it is at the creation of the table, uh, just as create and the table table name tab two uh, with some column called id which is of int and then we can mention unique so this particular table uh, called tab two uh, will be created with a column called id which has the rule unique so this is how we going to we are going to create tab like uh, the unique index uh, or it called unique constraint on a particular table and uh, how about like uh, the other way around uh, just like i've shown the other way id integer let's move it out and i want the constraint to be added with the name constraint uh, it's you unique constraint on the table id unique id unique of id so 
this is completely same as this. Let's try it executing. See the same one. So uh, this is about the unique key creation, unique key at the time of creation. Uh, what is a primary key? Primary key is the one by which we uniquely identify or record in the table. Uh, for all tables, we might have like uh, ID, mobile number, or let's say employee only. Well, we have the select query for employee. So this is the employee table, which has uh, ID field and as well as uh, date of birth, state, district. So in this particular table, uh, name can be duplicated because multiple names like uh, same names can be uh, available for uh, the employees. Salaries can be same, uh, cities can be same as they can be, they can be like uh, belong to one or the other same cities. So one thing in this particular table, which, is, which will be uh, like uh, different for each and every user is this put uh, use each and every employee is this employee id so this is the column that can be defined as primary key so how we do that same as this we instead of just this we mention this We just change the primary key, uh, like key name. Uh, this is the particular uh, key that will be created on the column of this table. Let's create table three. So if this just works, we like uh, we should be uh, able to see the table three with the primary key constraint imposed on the column called ID. So it says commands completed successfully. Let's see the create script of the employee. Uh, let's refresh. Where do we have? What do we, what did we create? Tab three. This is the particular table that we created just now. Um, let's say, what is this create script for this particular table? So let's say uh, whether this primary key in your constraint added or not. Let's see, this is the primary key on the table three. It says like this particular line, it says primary key is added with this particular name, uh, that is a primary key that has defined like this. And whenever we add a primary key for a particular column in the database table, uh, the cluster, clustered index will automatically get imposed on it. That indexes will be discussing in the next sessions in detail. So this is about the primary key. And uh, what do we have? foreign key foreign uh, one key difference between primary key and foreign key uh, primary key is the one like uh, which by which we can be uh, by which we can identify a record uniquely uh, within that particular table and foreign key is the one by which we identify the record in the other table let's say uh, uh, do we have an uh, employee, uh, sorry, department ID in the in our, uh, what do you call, uh, employee table? I guess not. Let's check. Yeah, we don't have it. Let's say. 
let's alter. Now we have department ID also, and we should be uh, creating the department table. As a uh, DPT ID as in and name as uh, what will take. So this is all like uh, we have now uh, employee and uh, the department table. What is the common point between employee and the department table is that uh, this particular department ID and this particular department ID is the same one. So uh, when I say uh, this particular department ID can identify this department's uh, department name uniquely. So that's where uh, it called like foreign key. Uh, it just non-home key. Uh, let's add uh, the uh, foreign key constraint on the what you call uh, employee table. Let's alter, alter employee and uh, uh, we can just go with uh, add constraint funky name and uh, the keyword for in key. on the column uh, which says uh, DPTID which references reference references department tables department ID department tables DPT ID. Let's execute this unknown object employee. So, did we make a spelling mistake? Yeah, we should be mentioning the object type as well. Uh, no primary candidate keys of in the department. So, for this, uh, the department ID should be in the department table should be a primary key. For that, we should again. Uh, uh, add the primary key also table depart dpt table add constraint or uh, so here jk show there is nothing called uh, parent or uh, child tables so it is just that uh, we call it a uh, master data uh, as a department one. Uh, so department will have all the master's data and uh, respective uh, other tables uh, which hold master data's links. So it just the link uh, primary key is kind of like just the link between uh, uh, two tables. Uh, am I good to go, uh, Jay Kishore? Uh, 
thank you and primary key on department id what is the column name dpt id so it's dpt id let's execute this it is not nullable so in that uh, on no nullable column is in the department so for this it says like uh, the column should be uh, non nullable first so let's add that first now this is not the way that we add the uh, not null constraint so at the time of altering uh, that we tried in the previous session uh, like uh, in the first one uh, alter table and uh, we just uh, change it to uh, uh, alter Manjunath said the proper way again once completed successfully and then we add a primary key for it commands completed successfully and then we add foreign key for department on this particular command so this particular thing says like uh, uh when we uh this particular uh command uh now uh like uh, made a link between employee and department table so if we go and uh, like uh, check the constraints on the uh, tables that we have uh, we have employee table let's check the constraints that it had see the table name is employee and we added a unique and then primary key onto the like employee id column the unique one and we added foreign key with the name uh fkdid on the column department id which is referring to department's table department id so this is like employee tables department id is linked with department stable department id so this is about the uh, foreign key and now we have the constraint called check let's close this we don't need this anymore so what actually is check so check is the uh, rule uh, that to be defined on the particular table uh where it should uh follow like uh, it should uh, get passed from the get passed from one condition for multiple let's say i want uh, one table which takes which takes age uh, as in one column and it should not allow me to enter the details or like uh, uh what it called uh, the age number uh, less than 18 so for that what we do we just mention uh, this is the condition that i'm gonna use so it is that uh, uh, when we define our table structure uh, create table table name 
column one, its data type. And we say, check space, the constraint, uh, what it called, like uh, if it is a, a column name is column name one, I'll be mentioning this column name one, that should be greater than 18 or whatever it's true. So this particular column, uh, let's say just uh, dummy two, uh, let's say this age, data type be int, check age to be greater than 18. Let's execute this. I have created table with uh, check constraint on age to be 18, at least 18. Uh, let's insert into dummy two values. Let's say I'm gonna enter two, oh, sorry, 12. Let's execute this invalid object name table. I have missed table. Wait a second. It's not the table, it's spelling I missed. Insert into DOM2 values 12. See, this is conflicted with the check constraint, which, is, which takes only greater than 18 values. Uh, let's say I enter 18. It's again gonna take error just because I want the age greater than 18. So I'm gonna enter 19 here. It's going to enter into the table. Let's see what we have in this table. See, we have the table data with 19. Yep, obviously, Jake, sure. It's one row factor, and let's see the data. It has 19 and 20. So this is how the check constraint will uh, work. Uh, we can add and uh, like uh, delete or like we can modify all this constraint with the alter tape alter command that we add that option like as earlier and we have default value so let's say i have uh, uh, one more table called dump dummy three it's a dummy table which takes age as integer and uh, And another one called uh, some name, which takes rat care of 10. This actually enters just the age and the name uh, into the table, but I won't uh, like if no other names are like, if no name is passed from the user, I want to set a default value to that particular column. That's where this default comes into picture. So here, the default, uh, what it called? Uh, the, the default command can be used. D F F A U L T default and space and with followed by the default value that you want. Let's say test. So when I execute this, it just says comments completed. And like, uh, let's try insert into dummy three uh, values with the uh, age with some 12 and then value with A. Let's execute this. What is going to be the output? I'm just gonna enter that particular details or it's just gonna enter like uh, insert that particular detail select start from BUMMY three. Oh, wait a second, let's select and execute. See, we have this particular uh, table that has values with 12 and three. I'm gonna insert the same uh, 
values, but without this one. Execute. Columns names are not specified. When we are doing uh, like individual columns or anything, then we should be uh, mentioning the columns as well. Dummy three of age. Enter. See what is going to be the dummy uh, output now from the select command. I did not mention this test here, but I mentioned the default value here. So that's how we this default can be used. And uh, did we get all all covered now. Yes, we did get covered. All of them. And guys, any doubts still now? And please try to install uh, Anil Kumar index will be discussed in the next sessions because indexes will be like uh, multiple or there that will be discussed. And any other things that we need? And any other doubts that uh, from this session?